Welcome back. This is part 19 of Eliza's reign. It is actually the last part of her reign. So if you are keeping up with my videos, you'll notice that I haven't been around for like a month. So um, that is basically because, you know, I feel like there's this lull when kids are the kids are just born in generational series where you're just kind of waiting for them to get a little older, see what's going to happen. And I kind of didn't know what to do while they were young. You know, I ran out of um, everything that I was going to do at this time in my Sims lives. So I just kind of, you know, didn't do anything because I wasn't sure what the plan was. So I thought to myself, you know what, Eliza is passing away in like one Sim week. So I am going to finish this playlist, this generation with Eliza. And then we'll do kind of a time skip where we have we'll come back and the kids will be a little older. So um, that is the current plan. And we are going to do that. And then in the meantime, because, you know, I think it'll probably be a little while longer and I feel like I just need a break. We've gone through like over a hundred straight parts of this family with these two s playlists that we have here. So I think I need a little break from this family and I have a plan for just like a little short mini series that we're going to do while, say, while this time skip is going on. So that's what's happening here. <laughs> so we are having this part and just kind of wrapping up everything with Generation 2. And what is going on here is, if you'll remember last time, Reliana got pregnant and then Asa got alien pregnant. So both of, you know, our future queen and our future king were pregnant at the same time. So Reliana just gave birth to her child, which was a daughter, and I named her Natsu. Now, I was going to name her Summer, and then I was like, well, since we're going with Asa, Gohan, um, kind of Japanese names, I was like, okay, I'll name her Natsu, which is Summer in Japanese. So that's going to be the theme for this level of the royal children. They're all going to have uh, Japanese names. And so we do have Gohan trying to learn things, trying to up his skills. We're having him do the potty skill. And, um, you know, Relian is actually keeping in touch with her brother. I think that things have been going a lot more smoothly now that Seth has kind of found his own path and his own way and is kind of not held to the expectations of this kingdom. So I think that the kingdom that he's making is a little more, you know, loosey-goosey with the rules. So um, I think that that's what's best for everyone. Sometimes you just have to remove yourself from a situation and then you can all get along better. So I think that's what, especially Eliza is hoping that her children will continue to get along, especially now that they're both going to be leaders of their own kingdoms, which is really important because we don't want any wars. And so now we're just waiting for Asa to have the alien baby. And, um, we're getting some skill levels with Gohan. Like I said, he's talking to his mother. And um, also tomorrow, which is now today, because it just became Friday, is the Royal Summit. So we'll invite over Luna and give her presents, which will be really nice. And also in this part, we're going to get everyone pregnant with every other baby that's going to be born in Generation uh, 4. Generation 4. Um, Gohan will be the king of Generation 4 as of right now. He has purple eyes and he is alive and, you know, doesn't have any problems. I mean, he's a toddler, so we'll see as things go on. But um, anyway, so we are going to get everyone pregnant with the rest of the babies. There's only a couple more, um, just mostly with the earldoms because those are new. And some of those, we have two more marriages we have to get through. So we're going to do that. And then also we're going to cull the rest of the elders. So... No more Gen 2. It's going to be Gen 3 and Gen 4 going forward. And we're just, again, like I said, waiting for that baby to be born. Summit is starting, so let's start inviting people over. And then we will get the ball rolling here. My baby is crying. My poor baby. Um, yeah, I hate babies. <laughs> I really do not like babies, but you win some, you lose some. You got to deal with them. And I made their life stage longer because I'm on long lifespan. So anyway, 
we're giving presents to Luna. Um, Eliza just painted a painting for her and Reliana knitted a rug for her. And then Asa has so much stuff in his inventory from being a scientist. So he's just going to give her like a rock of some sort. And then um, Simone did a school project. So she's going to give that to her. And for some reason, toddlers can't give gifts despite wanting to participate in this holiday. So we're just going to accept that. And um, I am going to force Asa to give birth because they got pregnant at the same time. So I don't know why it's taking so long. Plus, we're kind of on a time crunch. Like, I have to be somewhere in a half an hour. So we were we were rushing because especially check-ins take forever because my loading screens are like 10 minutes a piece. So all this, like, switching between households and stuff takes me all day. Like, it's literally taken me all morning to get this footage. So anyway, um, for some reason, my baby is has like all these other siblings supposedly but that never happened so i really don't know what's happening here <laughs> we're just gonna accept it um and you know we have our own family tree so just because this one's a little messed up it's fine um and also i have to fix the baby because for some reason it didn't come out with any alien coloring despite being an alien baby so we're just gonna pretend that's not happening i'm gonna give her purple skin because you know I mean, purple's their color. So uh, moving on, we are here at the Kitsune household. And we have two marriages to, these are the last two marriages of Gen 3, which is Cade and Alexander. So Cade and Maureen are currently um, a little romantic, but we need to get them married. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get some romance going. We're also going to have Alexander invite over Kari. Now, Kari has been playing really, really hard to get. Every time he tries to flirt with her, she's like, nah, not interested. You're a loser. <laughs> so uh, we are going to try and schmooze her one last time before I decide to give up and cheat them. Because, I mean, you are the only single people left. I have nothing else for you. You have to be together. I don't care if your marriage is unhappy. In fact, your unhappy marriage would create some nice drama for us in the future. So moving on, um, we are having these two also flirt. Everybody's flirting. I'm just switching back and forth between these two groups just to make sure that everything is going well. I'm just keeping an eye on Kari because, you know, once she decides she's done, it'll only become worse. So we are going to just keep an eye on her for that. I think I sent... I'm sending Cade to go woohoo. Oh, Agnes woke. <laughs> Agnes walked by, but she did not notice that we were flirting. So that was good. We almost got crumple bottomed. <laughs> so um, yes, it's working this time. They are getting romantic. This is good. We are good. So um, that's what's going on here. We have these two just getting it you know, romantic and flirty and everything. So she seems to be enjoying herself um, up to a point. Then she gets bored for a second. So then we have to kind of backtrack a little bit, but um, we're winging it. Yeah. So there is their first kiss. And then we are going to keep going. We're going to ask her to be his girlfriend. And um, hopefully we can get married very soon oh see no now she's bored she's bored like we gotta reset we gotta stop we cannot have this she cannot be bored and we are just continuing here we're gonna try and propose to her and then we're also gonna propose to Maureen as well so you go and propose my man so here we go she said yes also Kari said yes which is good because I was a little worried she'd say no but now she's leaving before we can marry her so whoops um so these two, okay, so I'm going to skip this part. Basically, what happens is they all get married. They all elope. And the reason that I'm skipping this part is because something glitched and they, like, spent, like, 10 minutes getting married and I had to reset them and then have them get married again. And it was just this whole thing that was not working. So um, all you need to know is that they're married. <laughs> and uh, we have finished the marriages for this generation. So now we are going to head to the Siren household and the Siren household, let me think. I think we need one more child in the Siren household and then also Regina is still alive. So in the Kitsune household, there was no more babies needed and there was no, um, no elders that needed to die. So that is not the case here. Oh, no, no, I was wrong. Sorry. No more children here. We're just getting rid of Regina because if you'll remember, LJ 
and Giselle, um, Giselle cheated on LJ with his, one of his triplets and, um, that's how they had the baby. So he doesn't know that the kid's not his. He doesn't know that he's infertile. So that's why they're not having any more kids. She just wanted to make sure she could get an heir and it would, you know, reasonably resemble her husband. So, um, no more children for them, just the one. And the Grim Reaper has come for Regina. Honestly, Regina was one of my favorites for real. I ended up loving her so much. She was definitely one of my favorites from Gen 2. Um, so we're going to head to the graveyard and put her urn down. And then we will head over to the next household. But first, like I said, here we are at the graveyard. And here is where she goes. So I'm just going to fix that up a little bit. Put something nice there. Um, we'll give her like these black flowers because she liked to wear a lot of dark colors, a lot of blacks. Um, she was definitely modeled a little bit after Regina Mills from Once Upon a Time. So she was very, um, you know, she was, she started off as not a very kind person. I mean, she was mean. She had the mean trait. And, um, you know, she did have an affair with her father-in-law, but um, I find her very likable because I like her. <laughs> So there's that and she was so beautiful and I just uh, she's one of my favorites. So Moving along we are headed over to the Griffin household and yes, okay the Griffin household is one where we need to have a child and Mikel is still alive if you'll remember before he has killed his wife Cassidy so goodbye Cassidy um, because Cassidy killed Mikel's lover Ashlyn so and um, Ashlyn also had Mikkel's affair baby. So that is kind of what happened there. I mean, honestly, that was one of my favorite things, that baby, um, Finn. Because he, um, he looks just like Mikkel. Like blonde hair, purple eyes. There was no mistaking that kid for Yuji's child at all. Period. So, um. I just loved the way that turned out. And I didn't even do that on purpose. So um, we are having Terry and Mikhail Jr. try for a baby. And Mikhail Sr. here is about to die. So there's that. Oh, actually, maybe I should rename their baby. Should we go for Mikhail the third? Should we do that? Maybe I'll rename the baby when it gets older. Um, I'm th I'll think about it. So here we go. And he is now dead. Everybody's watching. It's very not good. And uh, the baby's crying. So there's that as well. And there we go. We are just going to engrave his stone and then take it to the graveyard. So here we go. And I just like to say like what their position was and then also what generation they were part of. Not that my graveyard isn't already organized by generation, but still. Um, I'm going around in kind of weird circles because I put the founders in like these middle spots and then have kind of had to go around the circle. So you can see the founders are um, Long John and Haley and then next to them are is generation two and then next to them is generation three. So that's what's going on there. And there we go. So we'll just have him mourn for his father and then we'll head out. So they are going to be expecting another little one, which is going to be great. And I am really excited about that. So here we go, headed to the next place. Now we're not going to go to the Perryton household because we have nothing to do there. They don't need any more babies and they don't have any elders. So because we're low on time, we are just going to skip them and head straight to the Swan household, which already has two kids. Um, yeah, they already have two kids. I think we're just getting rid of Apollo here. Now, actually, Apollo isn't even an elder. He's So Apollo and Adora are much younger than all the others. But um, I'm calling Gen 2. This is the end of Gen 2. So, sorry, Apollo. Awkward. Killed by your daughter. So um, that's what's going on there. And... Then we are having the Grim Reaper come. You know, we're just going to play this game a couple of times where we are just taking the gravestone and then taking it to the cemetery. So here we go, doing that again. And actually, um, 
only the so the big house in the middle in the graveyard is for the royal family the four corners mausoleums are all for the ducal houses and so then here in the catacombs are where the marches and earldoms are going to have their graves stored so that's the current plan we'll kind of see how we have to move things around depending on how much room we end up having i mean but we're only in we're only in um gen two i don't know if anyone no i don't think anyone from gen three has died yet so um we're pretty good on that front and we are now headed here to the Raven household where we are going to say goodbye to Killian. So goodbye, Killian. Uh, we are now again headed to the graveyard. Blaze had already passed away. We only have a couple of people left, I think. Yeah, only um, Kayla and Adora are left after this. And of course, Eliza. But here we go. Okay. Headed out. This is just like housekeeping at this point. But anyway, we are headed to the Lion March. Lastly, it's the last march here. We have four duchies, three marches, and we have three earldoms. And the earldoms are being created here in generation uh, three. Yeah, generation three is where the, the marquees, the marches, where generation two were created. And in generation three, we have the earldoms created and um the reason for that is that i wanted to increase the population steadily not just like all at once so that's why we're just doing one at a time but honestly we already have so many sims that i'm just like no okay this is it we're done <laughs> expanding the kingdom um so we'll have one five eight eleven households in this kingdom i think that's plenty um, actually we could use less maybe I'll get rid of one I don't know um, I'm sure we can come up with a fun way to have an entire line die so that's fine um, moving on so we are having uh, like I said we're at Kayla and Adora are going bye bye and since we couldn't have Zachary and Raven no Robin we couldn't have Zachary and Robin woohoo because they were both sad, so I just used MCCC to get her pregnant again, and then I also used MCCC here to get um, the two new earldoms from Cade and Alexander from earlier to get them also uh, pregnant with babies. So that is what I wanted to do, and um, now we are going to head out back to the uh, graveyard to put these down and um, I really liked Adora as well I thought she was so pretty and I thought that she was so much fun um, so I do really like her we're just gonna put something nice on her um, gravestone as well so there's that um, what was I saying about the earldoms oh yeah also so the marches were created with the extra royal children but since this generation there weren't any extra royal children um, we instead, so Eliza's first husband was from the Kitsune Grand Duchy, which is the next step down from the royal family. So I was like, okay, um, let's have the leftover children from the Kitsune Duchy create the earldoms. So that's what happened there. So there we go. So Cade and Alexander both got the title of Earl from Eliza, Queen Eliza. So now, um, Eliza actually has four sim days left, and like I said, I have to now. I have to go in 20 minutes, so um, <laughs> we are just really getting this done. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm sorry, Eliza, we're gonna have to kill you the manual way instead of waiting for sim days because I don't have that kind of time right now. So anyway, um, for some reason it glitched, and the Grim Reaper didn't even come yet before we got this, but that's fine. We are going to head to the graveyard next and do that. So uh, that's it. That's Gen 2. I really loved Eliza. I really loved her life. Um, a little recap of Eliza's life is she, she um, you know, married Simon and they had uh, their three children. And then she, you know, Simon passed away from a disease. And then, um, you know, Seth got into drugs and it was very difficult and ended up losing his place as the crown prince and then um, it, he ended up going and creating his own 
kingdom. And then Reliana became the crown princess. And Eliza remarried Yuji. They had Simone. Um, honestly, I don't know if it was irresponsible of her to have another child so late in life because now Reliana is going to have to take care of Simone. She's still just a child. So anyway, we are going to uh, probably do like a bigger recap video. But um, after that, I'm going to take a little break here. We're actually going to head to Del Sol Valley for a little mini series. And I think that'll be fun. So then we will come back here with Generation 3 with Queen Reliana and King Asa. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I'm really glad to get back to you, and I will catch you in the next one.